Good afternoon. Welcome to Kafarado TV. My name is Angela Mirembe and I'm here on Unpacked. And I'm so pleased to have Mr. Alain Siblena here from UNFPA, the country representative of Uganda. And today we're going to talk about the demographic dividend. For some of you who might not know what we're talking about, stay tuned because I too just recently came to understand what this is all about. Um, Elaine, it's so lovely to have you. Thank you for having Thank me. you for coming. Um, I'm just going to dive straight into maybe how we met and then you can give us a little brief of who you are before we dive in. Um, I remember I met you at the Commonwealth Youth Meeting. I think it was a prelude to the, to the, to the event. And um, I saw you standing there and you were talking about the digital dividend, which caught my attention considering that Kafera Foundation were really all about digital skilling. Mm -hmm. But then you talked about the demographic dividend. And to yeah. be honest, I didn't quite understand what that was about. But uh, when we came to the office and then we got some flyers and then I started to realize, okay, demographic dividend about population and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. I mean, UNFP is about the population fund. So then I started to realize, okay, 50% 50, 50 is under 15. And these were really just numbers to me. And then 80% um, under the age of uh, 30. But what shocked me the most recently when I realized that from 65, age 65 and above is about 2%. That was a bit shocking to me because I guess when you're growing up, you think that uh, that age bracket is the majority because, you know, mm -hmm. they run the nation and, and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I started to get interested mm -hmm. and say, wow, Uganda is the second youngest uh, country in the world, you know. And so from you, I understand there must be advantages to us being a really young nation, mm -hmm. but there must be some disadvantages. I mean, for someone who's worked in UNFPA for I think it's over a decade mm -hmm. in different areas of the world, what, what information can you pass on to the youth? Because this is not a conversation we have every day to yeah. sit down and discuss population, what for? Why do you think this area should be maybe, should catch our attention if I can say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Maybe we can just start having a chat and you just briefly yeah. telling us about yourself, how you got into population and why. Okay. Yes. So thank you again for having me. And I remember well the moment that um, you caught my attention when you spoke up in front of all of these uh, decision makers, political decision makers and entrepreneurs, when you said that please also bear in mind that mm -hmm. when you talk about entrepreneurship, yeah. you need to look at internet-based technologies yes. and what that brings to young people yes. and that it employs young people. Yes. Um, I was not only agreeing with you, but I liked the way you stood up and very confidently yes. brought the issue up. Yes. For me, and I'm looking here at your board, innovation yes. is not bringing something new, but yes. renewing yes. something that is there. That's what you did. Yes. You moved, you shifted the conversation yes. from entrepreneurship mm -hmm. to what I call the digital revolution. Right. And the digital revolution is what's happening around the world. Yes. And that's why we're sitting. Yes. Right? Yes. On, on an afternoon when we can live stream around our through our Facebook and so forth. Yes. Now I believe that the digi digital revolution can harness digital dividends. Yes. Right? yes absolutely. Um, and you are best placed to see how that plays out. Mm -hmm. How you use IT and digital revolution for entrepreneurship, for employment, mm -hmm. for empowerment, for education and so forth. Yes. Now where the demographics come in mm -hmm. is that you have in every single country around the world, when you look at the history of countries, a demographic transition. Yeah. That means that countries slowly by slowly, as they evolve, mm -hmm. have lower fertility, okay. less children, right. and people are living longer. So you have lower mortality. Yes. Yeah. And as that happens, there comes a moment when uh, there is still a significant number of young people and of children yes. in the population. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a, a population pyramid, it, it actually looks like, like a yes. pyramid, yes. right? And eventually, that, that, so the, the, the youngest population gets smaller and, and so it becomes like a cone or like a cylinder. Yeah. Um, but as that happens, that doesn't happen overnight. Right, it takes a while. There long. is still, at some 
point in the country's history a large number of young people yes. and a large number of children and a small number of older people. people. That's yes. why you, you, you come, you, you draw your attention to this 2% yes. right, of yes. over 65. Now, the dividend happens if a country takes the opportunity of that young population, population. to look after its dependents, yes. and that's young children, but also the older, older, people. older population, yeah. and hence makes the investments and savings so that the population, as the population grows older, mm -hmm. You have capital, yes. you have savings, you have investments that benefit the, the, whole, the whole population. Yeah. That dividend is not uh, automatic. So the transition is automatic, right. but for that to become Happen. a dividend mm -hmm. is not automatic. Oh. That needs to be earned. And that needs to be earned when a country makes very, very deliberate um, investments in the education right. of its young people, yes. and especially in the education of its young women, yes. health of young people and health of young women, especially reproductive health, yes. and of course the job, labor and employment mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. And among that you have vocational skills, etc. And yeah. I think we will talk about yes, that definitely. later. Yeah. So, so that's how that linkage comes about. Yes. Right? And when you look at Uganda, we look here into this crowd, you look anywhere where you drive, yes. you see that Uganda is a very young population. population. And as you correctly said, so it's almost 80% mm -hmm. that of its population is lower than, 30. or younger than 30 yes. years. So what does that mean? In, in our view, and in my personal view, it means that that is not a bad thing. Yes. If all these young people live up to their potential, yes. Uh, that means they have good education, they have good health care, mm -hmm. they have information on how to manage their sexuality and as they grow out of their sexuality, mm -hmm. uh, out of their puberty into young adults, yes. um, and that there is a chance for these young people to find employment. Well, you, you actually talked about something that I want to talk about. Um, UNFPA is very involved in sexual reproductive health. That's one of your cores. And uh, if they actually mention sexual reproductive health, some people would just be like, isn't that the basic information a child will get? It's, it's um, it, you know, a sex talk. But um, is it more than that? And why yes. should should it be like a focal point? Why yes. should it, yeah, could you just shed some well, light on that? It's very simple. Mm. It's because we, we fundamentally believe that um, uh, sexual and reproductive health right. and uh, human rights, yes. right? So okay. as you just said, everyone mm. should have the right to know exactly what is happening in their body yes. and what's happening as you start growing up, mm -hmm. when you get into your puberty, when you have sexual relations yes. or not, yes. where you decide um, when to engage in those. Um, and then, of course, as you know, sexual relations uh, lead may lead to, to pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So to make a choice and to have the information of whether you want to be pregnant, yeah. uh, how many times mm -hmm. and at what intervals. Right. Uh, yes, so you're right, everyone should know about mm. that, but not everyone does know yes, about true, it, right? True. So not only does not everyone know about that uh, basic functioning of their body, mm -hmm. but they don't know how the opposite gender thinks yes. or feels about the relationships that they may want to go into. Right. Um, but they don't know, and women often don't know mm -hmm. in Uganda, where to get Help or services, information, yes. uh, for what we call family planning, mm -hmm. right? Now, whether that is contraception or abstinence right. or other ways of sort of delaying a pregnancy, mm -hmm. uh, for us is fundamentally important. Why is it important? Because of two reasons. The first is that we believe that making that choice on whether you are sexually active mm -hmm is your first moment of empowerment. Right. That's the first time when you make a decision as a young adult. Right. Even when you're still 12, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you do with your body? Yes. Right? That's the first reason. So it's, it's a fundamental uh, aspect of, of empowerment mm. and of living your right. Mm. The second thing is that 25% of all uh, adolescent Ugandans meaning mm. below the age of 19, yeah. 25%, so one-fourth, yeah. wow. has already had at least one child. Right? Wow. So teenage pregnancies is something Prevalent. that is um, not right, yes. 
um, we believe that one, you, you know, you should not be a child having a children. Child, yes. And so you should be able to stay in school and, and to build your future the way you want, want to build to, your future. Yes. Not by having to have the responsibilities of a mother, yeah. which you may not be prepared for, neither physically, no mentally, mentally, no economically, that's right? right? So that's why this is important. Okay. Um, you mentioned how people should have the right, you know, to delay pregnancy. Uganda's birth rate is quite high, 3% yes. per year, which um, shocked me because it's projected that by 2040, we might actually be 80 million yeah. people. And um, it concerned me because when I look at the resources now and uh, where we're going, and even when we dive into, you talked about education mm. and skilling, and one of my questions was, do you, do you think we're underutilizing our youth, even in terms of um, education? Because are they, are they prepared? Because if we see um, the ratings of about 400,000 uh, youths graduating every year, and then we have jobs which are less than maybe 10,000, but then our population continues to grow at 3%. Yeah. Yes. Um, how... Might you have any ideas about how we could maybe prepare ourselves for the future? Apart from SRH, but even the youth today, the skilling or getting employed. And are you able to just shed some light on that? It's a very difficult question and mm. it's normally the questions that politicians are very happy to answer. <laughs> um, and um, I'm, you know that we, we are here you know, to support the government of Uganda and right. the population of Uganda mm. in its own development path. Yes. Now, uh, what you've just said is, is a fact that nobody will change and mm. that nobody will take away. Right. And that fact is that the population of Uganda from now until 2040, right, mm -hmm. which is when Uganda wants to be a middle-income country, yes. is going to double. So it's going to move from 30, almost 38 million, right to practically 80 million. And that is because of what you just said, yeah. the high growth Birth rate, rate, yeah. growth rate of growth the population. Rate, yeah. right? So many countries have gone through similar experiences. Mm -hmm. But then what happened is that in those countries, and if you look at Asian countries, or some countries of the Middle East or Latin America, yeah. their economic growth was extremely high. And it was even higher than and much higher than the, the demographic growth. So that's the first thing. Okay. Now, is that going to happen or not? I'm not the Minister of Finance mm. or of Economic Development, but that is something that the government, government needs to pay very close attention to. Right. The other thing which is part of this is that, um, part of this equation is that the fertility rate yeah. is still very high. Yes. Over five children at, at average for every woman in okay. reproductive age, right? Um, so your family size is very large. Yes. Um, now, if you don't have the means to sustain your family, and you don't have, you don't keep your children, you don't have the means to keep your children right. in school. Right. Yes. You go into cycles or circles yeah. of, of, of that are vicious and, and negative, yes. right? Yes. So, it is important first of all that the government is aware. Mm -hmm and then addresses the issues. Yeah. Now, the issues that you asked yes. about young people, mm. um, it would seem to me that, yes, there is a large dichotomy between jobs that are available yes. and the large number of Ugandans that come every year on the job market. Right. There is, I think, um, a dichotomy between what the school system can absorb yeah. and the 1.2 million children that are born every year and that are added. Yeah, to the population, to the population of already. Um, so quality education is, is going to be very important. Yes. And then, of course, making that very, very important link between education and developing skills, mm -hmm. skills and competencies on one hand that cater for a competitive economy yes. that is still rural yeah. or agriculture-based, and on the other hand, preparing young people like you do here mm -hmm. uh, for sort of entrepreneurship's minds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course we, we, we can discuss this uh, further down. 
but I do not see all of these policies mm. and visions aligned. Yeah. Or if they are on paper, it's very difficult to put them into practice. practice. You mentioned um, the 2040 vision that we have for Uganda, which is basically to get our nation into the middle class or prosperous uh, middle state, income. middle income. Mm. Uh, and it was started 2013. Would you say that um, there's some progress? That we, is there some progress that's taking place? I'm, I'm the, the, the least uh, place to, 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 to talk about, about progress, <laughs> uh, because I'm, I've only been here for, for less than a year. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a difficult question, but what I can see is that, um, number one, the division the has determined mm -hmm. the ideal size of, of, the family, okay. of number of children, which is four, which is already a nice statement to, to make that. <laughs> uh, the other one is that, the women who are dying because they want to give birth mm. is reducing. Okay. Uh, mortality among children under five is reducing. Okay. Uh, fertility rate is reducing. Mm -hmm. Access to family planning and modern methods of contraception is increasing. Mm. So those are good indicators, Strides, yeah. right? Yeah. But the, the, one of the real issues that the country has, and that's not unusual, mm. uh, because all the neighboring countries have the same uh, challenge, uh, is inequality, mm -hmm. inequality mm -hmm. and inequity, mm -hmm. right? Uh, between urban and rural, yes. between men and women, women between yeah. young and old, and 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 that takes me to another topic. And you've mentioned mm -hmm. because you mentioned that all these people who are in power yes. are at a certain age. age. Yes. And so for me, the biggest, most exciting uh, opportunities for for us at UNFPA. Mm -hmm is to bring the three generations of Ugandans together right. around the table yeah. and discuss policy or discuss their outlook on policy. Yeah, I think that would be very interesting. We're always having a, a debate in here where different generations, even just in the offices, they're struggling because you, you have um, what is termed as the Generation Z, the, the kids who are about to enter the job market. Then you have um, the Gen Y, who is before the baby boomer. So you come into a company and uh, the baby boomer is the CEO, but the Gen Z is working on Facebook, but the CEO doesn't quite understand because in his time that yeah. is... Uh, so I think it would be that's really... Not the case in that's <laughs> You're hippie on Twitter. Mm. But uh, I think it, it, so, that would sound great if all policy, if different age brackets could yes. actually sit down and talk about these things. And uh, that brings me to one thing like education this could possibly even be just on your personal view a lot of where we go we hear you know the education system the education system and you just mentioned now to make people relevant do you think Uganda should have more vocational skilling um, alongside because all we hear is everyone's fighting to get into university 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 but also what we're starting to realize is they come out with a lot of theory but when it comes down to practically doing some work yeah. It falls through. So what's if, if I suggested something like, you know, I believe it should be 50-50, university stroke, vocational, or if after you finish university you at least take a year in vocational, do you think that could possibly help us with one like our unemployment issues and, and, and stuff like that? I'm not an education expert, right, mm. but it, it definitely makes sense to me. Mm. I think there, there's a number of things here to, to be considered. Um, I do believe that a lot of countries that have made very quick progress mm -hmm. in the education system mm -hmm. and keeping children in school for as long as possible, mm -hmm. right? Not only primary, but secondary and tertiary, right. are those that have moved away from a memory-based knowledge, yes. knowledge system again, yes. or knowledge education system to a more critical, creative, innovative, yes curriculum yeah. where you you learn or sort of you acquire, mm -hmm. you develop soft skills, yes. emotional intelligence, strategic thinking, mm -hmm. critical reasoning right. um, versus performance that is based on knowledge and achieving high marks. Yes. So that's the first thing that for me seems to be fundamentally important. And within that, yes, everyone should be given the best possible sexuality education, according to their age, yeah. it should be appropriate, etc., etc. Yes. Uh, but then the other thing on vocational training, I think, is equally important. Mm. And, and so 
making sure that you have this that balance yeah. between the practicality mm -hmm. and the the knowledge that you get yes, in terms yes. of theory yes yeah. makes it makes absolute sense to me. Yeah. okay so um i think that pretty much sums it up uh we won't take too much of your time but we really really want to thank you for 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 the highlights that you've given um you're very welcome does anyone would anyone like to have uh, a question answered? We have an yes. It's okay. Okay. <coughs> um, I use just uh, a question. Uh, what innovation, just a statement, what is the point innovation that you feel um, if someone made it for you, you would even feel you want to adopt that person? What is that one innovation? I, I, um, I, I really like the question because I'm I'm thinking about exactly this and what what makes me as a leader mm. want to adopt an innovation. It's not what I would like to adopt. It's who I would like to have in my team who can mm. continuously innovate, mm. right? So just two distinctions. One, innovate on what you actually have mm. and making that more attractive, more. Um, more attuned for, for bigger markets and more outreach, etc. Um, so that's one thing. But, but the other thing is that we actually use what we already do mm -hmm. and use that as entry points to think totally out of the box, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I, do, I really don't have... Um, well, I have one opinion. I'm, I'm going to give you one example. But before that, I also have a strong opinion on innovations not being limited to young people. Mm. Old, older people like me or the, the younger old <laughs> can also have innovations, mm. right? Um, and they shouldn't all be IT based. And it's going to be an interesting dynamic. How do you use IT technologies for social change? So what is going to be socially interesting that doesn't make a profit and what is now an innovation that you can actually sell and get a market for and get sponsorship for etc so that that's a very important dynamic but right here and now um, when I ask my innovation uh, colleagues well let's say the the colleagues that are quite innovative or that are social change uh, entrepreneurs I put two things two challenges on the table the first is that it is very strange to me that this country has continuous stockouts of medication. Mm. In the district hospital of Kanungu, mm. or of uh, a district that is in Karamoja. Mm. That's the first thing. So how do you prevent that? How do you prevent that whole forecasting supply chain mm. to make sure that you don't have that? Especially because they are piled up in a central warehouse somewhere. Right? Mm. That's the first thing. The second thing, for young women, and I really believe that um, much more can be done, is menstrual hygiene mm. management. Mm. How, do you, how do you approach that? Mm. It is unacceptable that a girl is not allowed to go to school because she doesn't have sanitary pads. A young girl who is 14, 15 years old, mm. she misses four or five days of school because of that. Why? Because she can't afford, her family cannot afford to buy her sanitary pads. However, you have a multitude of young or sort of innovative uh, approaches of reusable sanitary pads. Mm. How do we bring that to the market? How do we upscale? Mm. I think that would be two major innovations that I'd be very, very excited to, to hear about. Okay, so... I think we're out of questions. Elaine, I would really, really like to thank you for spending your afternoon with us here at, Cafero. <laughs> here at Cafero.tv. And to our viewers, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we hope to see you back next time. My, my name is Angie, and I was your host this afternoon. Have a good day. Thank you, Angie.